Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, a nice simple one for you today. I'm going to be drawing this bullfinch in my A5 sketchbook. And as you can see there, I'm using a reference photo with a grid mapped out on there. Now usually I don't um, use the grid method for drawing birds. I can usually draw those in freehand, um, get them fairly accurate. Uh, but this one was just a little exercise over on Patreon just to introduce people um, to the grid method. So this little sketch really is for beginners and intermediates. It's really not that difficult to do at all. And it didn't take too long either. Um, in fact, it's a really nice little subject to do in a sketchbook because you know they are quite simple and they're not very time consuming. Um, you know, you've not got large backgrounds to worry about or anything like that. You can just kind of focus in um, once you've done the line drawing, just focus in there and enjoy yourself with all the shading and all the texturing and everything. Um, and it's a lovely little subject to draw for a sketchbook. Um, often when I get sort of an hour spare in the evenings or something like that, I like to get the sketchbook out and maybe just sketch a few little birds. You know, they always make nice things to draw, sketch and paint. Uh, so it's a very popular little subject um, to do in your sketchbook and the great little sketchbook fillers as well, aren't they? Quick little tip for you, actually, if you are going to um, try this with the grid method. Uh, now the grid method itself is very easy actually. You can make the, the squares as big and as small as you like. Um, but one quick tip for you is when you're actually drawing the grid out on your drawing paper, make sure that the pencil you're using is only around sort of an HB grade, B or HB, something like that. Nothing too dark and nothing too hard either. And uh, another good tip is to make sure the pencil is actually blunt. Yep, I know, we're always trying to get people to sharpen the pencils and things like that, but no, when you're drawing a grid out, you want the pencil as blunt as you can get it, basically, because what you don't want to ha happen is the pencil embossing the paper, because you've got to erase that out, and you'll be drawing over that. And if you've got any embossed marks on your paper, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? You know, they're going to show through when you start shading it and putting any graphite or anything like that over it, you're going to see those grid lines coming through in your drawing and it's not really a, a good look. <laughs> so uh, try and keep the pencil nice and blunt and apply the lightest pressure you possibly can with it and you won't get left with any marks when you erase it. Okay, so what I'm using there now to get all the blacks in is the Conte Pierre Noir, um, well I'll, I'll say charcoal pencil, who knows what they are um, when you research them online as, as much information as you can get is they are a dye based um, pencil so it feels like charcoal it feels like sort of an oily charcoal pencil um, but it's one of the best pencils I've found for getting really dark matte blacks in your drawing and the reason I actually applied that first was to try and fix the lights and the darks in the picture right from the word go. It's actually a technique used in drawing. Um, it's a very effective technique actually because what happens is you've obviously got the white of the paper which is your lightest tone there and then when you go on with your darkest tone which is the black um, piano or pencil there all you've got to worry about then are the mid-tones. Everything is done you, you can easily balance the mid-tones now between the white of the paper and the black of the charcoal pencil. It's not confusing to the eye at all and it's actually very helpful to see the black and white shapes and tones on the paper. Um, and that's why I actually done that first. Now you can go straight in with the mid-tones um, if you want to, if you find it easy that way. It doesn't really matter which way around you do it, um, but it's definitely worth trying, you know, fixing the lights and darks first. Um, you know, in your black and white drawings. I find it very helpful actually uh, with certain subjects, particularly things like birds. Now you don't actually have to use um, the Conte pencils to get the really dark tones in there. You can just use regular charcoal. You could use um, the Stedler Mars Lumograph Black pencils. They'd work really well for this. Um, you could use just a standard black coloured pencil for this. You could also use ink. Um, that'd work well. Um, one of my members over on Patreon even just used an 8B regular graphite pencil 
and achieve some really nice dark tones with that. So it's not that important to actually use um, the Conte Pierre Noir pencils, although I've got a set of them, so I use them for this. Um, I just like to use them um, now and again for certain things like this, where I just want an area to be completely jet black, um, because using um, ink, you know, you can't erase that very well. And if you want to put highlights on top of that, you, you've got to use like a, a white pencil or something. Um, but the, the Conte pencils, they will erase. You won't get the paper back to clean white paper, but you'll be able to erase them just enough to get a really nice convincing highlight in the dark areas. Now, the only other pencils that I use for this drawing um, were mechanical pencils mostly. And for the bird itself, I used a 2H, HB and a 2B, um, just to get the feather textures there and some of the mid-tones in there. And obviously I used an eraser and a blending stump and that's it. So the kit list for this one is not a big one. It, like I say, everything's nice and simple and easy with this one. Um, you shouldn't really have any trouble with this, particularly if you use a grid method, use the grid method to um, map the line drawing out initially. You know, once you've got that line drawing down, um, you know, a good solid foundation there, you know, and you know it's accurate, um, it's gonna look good. No matter how um, well you do the shading, how good you match the tones and everything. If that line drawing's out, it's always going to look wrong. So always try to get the best and most accurate line drawing you possibly can. And that's where the grid will really help you. Now the area that I'm actually working on now, on the bird's chest, um, is probably the trickiest area. Uh, now when I say tricky, I really don't mean it's difficult or extremely hard or anything like that. Um, it just takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of practice, um, you know, to achieve that sort of feathery look on the bird's chest there. But obviously I, I talk more about um, the techniques involved uh, with layering the graphite and getting the pencil strokes um, correct and everything. I talk a lot more about that over on Patreon, um, but I didn't want to talk about Patreon too much in this video. In fact, um, I, di I did promise myself, I thought I'm not going to mention that this this project is a drawing project over on Patreon and I'm not going to mention it's only four dollars a month to join and I'm not going to mention at all the fact that we've got an absolutely fantastic community of people over there and I mustn't you know I mustn't mention at all anything to do that there'll be links in the description below and in the end cards as well because I know people are sort of <laughs> fed up of hearing that so I promise you know I won't mention um, Patreon uh, in this video but seriously though, um, you know, if you if you do want to just kind of just take your mind off things a bit, you know, with current events going on in the world at the minute, I find that just getting the sketchbook out, not committing yourself to a big, long, major drawing project that maybe you haven't got the focus for right now, but you just do several small sketches. Um, like I say, just sit down in the evening, get that sketchbook out, get your pencils out, just relax and enjoy yourself. I think birds and things like that, nice simple subjects are a really nice thing to do just to take your mind off things and to get you focusing on something positive, you know, something nice. Because I think a lot of people, um, you know, probably focusing on the news and the events that are going on in the world at the minute, you know, with the riots and the virus and all this kind of stuff, you know, and it's worrying times for everyone. So we've got to, you know, have a break from all that. And for me, sketching and drawing that's been perfect. It's been that ideal break. Um, you know, it's took my mind off things and I felt really good. You know, after I've done a little sketch, a little drawing or something, I feel completely relaxed and back to normal again. Um, so it just goes to show you, you know, the therapeutic benefits of actually drawing or painting can be immense, really, if you just kind of have the self-discipline just to say, right, I'm going to stop focusing on, you know, all the trouble in the world right now. I'm going to focus on something else, I'm going to get my sketchbook out and I'm going to draw and I'm going to enjoy myself. Simple as that. And you'll find that forcing yourself to do things like that really does work. So never underestimate the therapeutic benefits of drawing, painting and any kind of artwork. You know, it really does have a good positive effect on you. Okay, so we're just about at the end of the drawing now. Um, final last touches there. 
like I say, it really doesn't take long. It's a nice, simple one to do, just to get your mind off things, this one, really easy. Okay, so there we go. There's a finished little drawing there. Hope you like that one. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And as always, take care and stay safe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.